Good morning. This is book two of Daughter of Darkness. I'm going to read chapter 12, part one. Life was not going to leave us placid and static on a world went round and round, slowly spooning tapioca pudding on our unrolled tongues in the shade, while a lazy day counted off blade by blade of grass. No, the world moved us and made us prove ourselves time and time again. After the show and the mission, we left everyone drunk at the bar and caught the last train back under the bay. And on the way, we spotted a juicy one, a cantankerous little bottom feeder of a fish, gold chains turning green around his neck. He was hanging oversized clothes off his body and left his girlfriend at home to care for his sick mom so he could have another night to get over on someone, and soon. He was on the train with us, one car down, watching a woman on a cell phone who had wandered off from her friends, drunk, and she would be easy. Soon the iPhone would be mine, he thought, and he knew exactly where to take it for a quick turnaround cash, enough to get him nice and tight at the corner, so he could go and easy laugh and talk trash with the young hustlers under the sneakers on a wire, feeling like a real big shot with kids half his age, half willing to endure his nonsense so long as he didn't interfere with business. He might even make a lookout. We were watching him watching her as the train careened through the tunnel. I was watching Maze watching him. Kel was watching us watching him watching her watch her phone. I'm not sure, but I had a feeling the phone was watching us all. Then we got off at 19th and Broadway, following him, following her, out and up into the night, down Broadway a little ways where people were gathered in the aftermath of a show at the Paramount, beneath the giant facade of the gorgeous theater, circa 1931, a queen and king clothed in gold tile mosaic straight up from the sidewalk past the marquee, 110 feet to the sky. We were across the street where the drunk girl stopped at a bus station and sat down to wait while texting her friends. She didn't know where the hell she was. Our bottom feeder took the opportunity to walk off to piss, and we took the opportunity to catch him alone in the alley. Mae stepped out from the shadows off the brick wall where we were quietly posted, and calmly wrapped an arm around his neck and pulled him back by the green chains off his heels while I stole his voice so no one would hear him. Kel saw the whole thing go down. His spine was thrashing about, not used to being in any position other than curved inward, and possibly the first time since 89 he was aligned. And I could see the memories and flashbacks sparking up, the lights coming over his eyes of days when he was not so crooked, when mom was not sick, when dad was in the pick, when he played hoops and life was more than a single track ego loop. Back then he might have been something to talk about. Today the streets would thank us for losing him.